So one of the most amazing recordings of Marshall Rosenberg, the founder of Nonviolent Communication, doing NVC is of his San Francisco workshop. Maybe you've seen his video on YouTube, but it takes a freaking three hours. And so if you don't have time for that, if you have your job, your kids, your love life, your yoga, whatever, I did some work for you. I watched this recording and I boiled it down to 10 principles. I selected the most important stuff and I got it here for you in 10 tips so you can be totally up to date. And so what I will do as well is I will refer to some of my own videos in which I'm doing a demo because these principles are you know nice and all but how to apply it when you're talking to your dad or your partner is a whole different story so I'm showing you actually with those people uh, how to do that so you can see that as well so tip number one is to stop playing the game who's right do you know that game that you're kind of trying to be right with a person and Marshall Rosenberg says that this is a very tragic thing because what it leads to is that um, whenever we think someone's wrong, they deserve to be punished. So this is a whole thing that takes place on the level of society, actually. And so Marshall Rosenberg says, let's stop doing this game of being right. Let's stop punishment. Let's stop having obligations. Um, when you don't do them, you get punished as well. You know, shame that all also has to do with certain have to's in society. Let's get rid of all of that. And instead, let's play the game of, and I don't know if it's a game, but let's, let's see if we can work with finding each other's needs and getting all our needs met. That's what he proposes instead. And I will get more into it later. But the first thing to know is that stop playing the game who's right and notice when you're doing it. Start noticing it when you do it and then stop doing it. So the second tip is, is to not use dialect jackal. So what Marsha Rosenberg is saying is that jackal language is a language that enables us to keep playing that game of who's right. So jackal language is based on what is right and what is wrong. So it's judgments, for example. And the thing is like sometimes, or some of us might be aware of, you know, judgments, but there might be some, and so they maybe don't do that, but then there still might be this kind of sneaky dialect label dialect judgment in there so he gives the example of actually himself studying uh, psychology psychotherapy and then he starts to label people as you know psychopath or autist or you know if you notice you're doing that be aware that you're still playing this game of who's right especially if you do it to you know uh, judge someone and if you notice it doesn't doesn't um, contribute to connection with this person. Another example that Marsha gives of Jekyll language is Amtsprache. It's a German word and it refers to when you say you had to do something just because it's your job or just because your boss told you to do so. And Marsha Rosenberg says if you want to move to the game of, you know, um, instead of the game of who's right, if you want to go to getting all needs met, you need to acknowledge choice. And so you need to speak in a way of, I chose to do this. And so keep that in mind as well. Oh, and he actually has a quite a fun example of, you know, a mother um, in the workshop saying that, you know, but I have to cook, right? I cannot, there's no choice there. And then he actually challenges her to make a choice to either continue cooking every day, which she hates, or to stop doing that. And then actually he shares that later he gives another workshop and one of her sons actually shows up. And so he's super curious to check what happens when the mom, you know, what did the mom do? And so she stopped cooking. She chose to stop cooking. And he asked his son like, yeah, how, how was it for you that your mom stopped cooking? And he said, Marshall, I thought to myself, thank God, because now she's not whining and you know, talking every dinner, every time around dinner, how horrible it was for her to cook. And so as you can see, if you deny choice, um, and if you do stuff out of a have to, you're not only harming yourself, but also your surroundings. Tip number four is to not say, I feel as I do because you. So don't say, uh, it hurts me when you don't clean up your room or, um, because of what you said, I'm in so much pain right now. When you say that, you deny that your feelings are a result of your own thoughts and your unmet needs. And so it just, it might get triggered by someone, but it's your responsibility. You can share it and you can make a request, obviously, but if you blame it on the other person, that creates a huge disconnection between you and them, and actually also between you and yourself. You get completely out of your power. So this was a lot about what not to do, right? And so what to do instead? 
Marshall says instead we're gonna speak giraffe language as opposed to jackal language. And giraffe language is done in four steps. If you've seen any of my videos, you probably know about it. Actually, I will link to a video that really explains all the steps step by step in more detail. But just to say it shortly, you start with an observable action of what the person did that you didn't like. You know, we're, we're, we're assuming you're in a situation where someone triggered you and you want to say that. So what did the person do? An observable action. So no judgments or interpretations mixed in there because that creates disconnection. You share your feeling and it has to be a real feeling and not uh, a feeling that's, you know, that's like um, actually mixing in a thought. This is too much to explain right here. But if you look at my video about pseudo feelings, I will link to it down here. It will all become very clear. And then you share your need. If you know anything about nonviolent communication, you know that the NVC needs are really vital. I have a whole list of those needs. So I'll link to that up here. I never know where it is. It's somewhere on the upper side of this screen. Um, I have a list of those needs. So you can just see what is my need. You can just look at the list, very simple. And then you share the fourth step, you share your request. Okay, so if you wanna know more about it, check the, the video that has the four steps. It will link to other videos. You can study all night if you like. <laughs> so tip number six is about the child feeding the dog. What the hell is that? It's about whenever you ask a request, Marsha recommends to actually give the person a little note, <laughs> handwritten or just spoken, that you only want them to do what you ask them to do if they do so with the joy of a child feeding a dog. I don't know if you've ever seen a child feeding a dog, it really goes like, you know, it's super fun for them, actually, I think grown-ups. For me, it's also fun, you know, feeding a dog. The dog is happy, you are happy. If you cannot do the request with that kind of joy, then don't do it. Don't do it out of shame. Don't do it out of obligation. That's all again, like going to this game of who's right and wrong, doing things out of obligation. You wanna do things with a full yes. This is something I'm adding myself right now, but yeah. The thing about the child feeding a dog, I find it a beautiful metaphor to keep in mind and to check for yourself. Like, am I doing this with that kind of joy? If not, just be aware and make a choice of what you wanna do. Tip number seven is to never hear what a jackal speaking person thinks, especially not what they think about you. Just in normal language, it means whenever someone's judging you, <laughs> don't take it like personal. Just realize it's something that they're thinking and it's not true, it's a judgment, right? And so instead of really, you know, getting triggered by it, or you might get triggered by it, but instead of reacting to it, take a deep breath and try to guess what is their feeling and their need behind this jackal thought towards you. So are you maybe feeling scared because you would really like some reassurance? Or are you feeling angry because you want some safety that I will listen to you? I don't know, I'm just making up some stuff, right? So you just guess their feelings and needs. I already pointed you to the need card. It's very helpful for that. And it doesn't matter if you don't guess right, it's just about um, getting their attention to their own feelings and needs instead of what they think about you. Oh, and by the way, I have a demo about how I do this with my partner. I will link to it up here, up here, somewhere, find it. Um, and you can see how it's done. Tip number eight, I love this one. Never put your butt in the face of an angry person. What does Marshall mean by that? He means that, you know, whenever someone's angry with you, they're saying like, and you didn't do this, and you're... Instead of saying, but I didn't mean to say that, or, uh, but I did do that. That's putting your butt in front of the angry person, right? Do you see what I mean? What that does, it just will put oil on the fire. It just will create more like disconnection, more conflict. Again, what you do instead is to guess their feelings and needs. You know, are you angry because you would have liked some care from me? Right? So if you, if you keep doing that, you will create connection and the anger will subside. You will feel more compassion for the person and they will have space to hear you and to hear your side of the story. Uh, again, I have a demo about this. I asked my dad if he would share something with me that he didn't like about what I did. And I listened to him and I didn't use the but. So I will link to it up here. Tip number nine is to enjoy someone's suffering. This, to me, this sounded a bit strange at first. But what it means is that you're able to be present with someone's suffering 
instead of thinking, getting stressed and thinking that you have to fix it, that it has to go away. So if you're able to enjoy someone's suffering, so to listen and be present with them, the person will solve their thing by, it will be solved by itself, as it were. And so there's two things helpful in order to be able to do that. The first thing is to tell yourself, especially if they, you know, if they feel sad or triggered in whatever way, um, as a result of something that you did, if you were involved in their feelings somehow, tell yourself, I didn't cause this feeling, right? This is something that I already shared before. You never cause someone's feeling. So tell yourself, I didn't cause this and I don't have to fix it. Because the thing is, if we're trying to fix it, if we give advice and etc., we actually block this energy, this natural energy of the person itself that will fix the problem itself. Tip number 10 is, you know, so far we talked about what you can do when you don't like something that someone did or when someone else doesn't like something that you did, right? It's all about not liking something that happened. But of course it can happen as well that someone does something that actually really meets your needs. And you want to express that and so this you can do as well in a more connecting way in a giraffe way instead of in a jackal way the jackal way would be actually giving a positive judgment so saying that someone is really smart or really beautiful you know that's those are actually judgments and i created uh, actually two videos about um, why there's a problem with giving these kind of like positive judgments and also what to do instead how to give giraffe appreciation and i i explained everything so clearly i don't want to do it again here to save a little bit of time but if you want to hear more about that i will again link to the videos up here or either down below